Hi everybody, it's Faith from Creative Bug coming at you live like we do every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. And I have a special guest. Hi everyone, I'm Tara Fonin. And what are you doing here? Well, I'm filming some classes. Three classes. Yes. And they've been so amazing. We just finished the last one. Yes. Yes. A few we minutes did. ago. You guys have been amazing. You've made this You've process been so easy. I know. You and it's been not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Mutual <laughs> admiration society going on. But really, you guys have it's been fun. I'm I've had a blast. I'm so glad you also did. It starts off tricky, but now yeah. you're like, Oh, I yeah. could do this all yeah. the time. Really tricky. Didn't know what my name was on Tuesday. But now right. I know what my name was. It's Stara. Yeah, Stara. I know I'm a quilter. I know those things today. I did not know them on Tuesday. It's hard when you're asking <laughs> someone that you're like, I don't remember because the light. But no, she's done an amazing job and we're totally enamored with her quilts and her quilting style. You can see behind us, there's one on the wall and one hanging and everyone who walks by the studio goes, oh, that quilt is gorgeous, right? We've had nice. to like give tiny tours of, oh, nice. here's the nice. quilt, it's Tara's quilt. Um, and I was particularly enamored when we first started talking. Of course, we have to ask about, like, what was your first quilt you ever made? And I thought yours was really <laughs> special. Right? Would you care to share with our audience your first quilt story? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I started quilting after the millennium, but I learned how to quilt via the 1931 style. So my mom gave me this book by Ruby Short McKim and was originally published in 1931. It was republished in the 70s. She was cleaning out her sewing room. She gave me this book along with some fabrics. So I read through it and I was like, I'm gonna make a quilt. Ready. I remember it was summer, it was a heat wave, and I was like, I'm gonna make a quilt. Right. I had a couple weeks off of work. So I sat down and in this book it tells you make a cardboard template, mm -hmm. trace around it, cut it with your scissors. <laughs> and I think it even said you can stitch it together by hand or machine. And I called my mom and I was like, can I sew this on the machine? She's like, you can sew it on the machine. Okay. So <laughs> a couple weeks into the project, my template started to melt because I was using yeah. like a magic marker, like a felt tip pen and it started to melt the cardboard the corrugated cardboard that I was using of course yeah and so I went down to the quilt store and I was telling the woman about how my first quilt was going and I was telling her but you know my, my templates are melting and it, all the tips are getting round and maybe there's like one side has been shaved down by right. the marker I was making an Ohio star quilt and as I was talking her jaw just kind of you, you oh, she was like, eyes. oh, honey. And she took me over to the wall of rotary cutters, and there was like mats and rotary She's cutters. Like, she told me something. what they did, yeah. and she gave me a big discount and like sent me on my way. And I still have that rotary cutter 16 years later. And the thing I love about this, this quality, rotary cutter, quality which we have rotary to cutter. Show the folks at home <laughs> is you've been using it's it's like worn down. Yeah, it's flat on it's one side. 16 years. Yeah, and it's yeah. amazing. But I love this rotary cutter. It's like an extension of my arm. And you've come a long way since then. Yeah, yeah I fully, I've, you know, that first quilt, I also thought it had to be hand quilted. Mm -hmm. I you must have spent hand, a long time with it. Oh, I attempted hand quilting and then I gave it up. And my mom gave me like her old quilting frame, like one of those big, like oh. eight feet long, yeah. right? And I'm sitting you there committed. living up in the country. I was like trying to quilt, <laughs> but I thought my stitches had to be tiny and I right. gave up. And I eventually took it off the frame and just machine quilted over the hand quilting stitches. Really? Yeah. Like I just, I was, I was done with the hand quilting. Um, we are live, so if you have any questions or just want to share your incredulous disbelief of this process, or if you want to share your uh, first quilt story, we'd love to hear it. Everybody has one. And I love questions, so and she loves questions. Feel free. Do you still have that quilt? Yeah, it's on our bed. Really? Yeah. So yeah. it turned out okay. Yeah, it turned out great. Despite you know? your blasphemous right, but you know, 16, 17 years later, it's completely falling apart in the oh. pat in the batting showing. But I use polyester batting. Oh, so that's so not going anywhere. Pristine. It's fantastic. And in fact, my husband just said we need a new bed quilt. But could you use polyester batting? He did not. Yeah, I'm going to. I he wants it. it to be the same weight. Yeah, he says the perfect weight. I so love this. I'm making <laughs> a quilt right apart. now, and it's going to have polyester batting on it. I, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> I know, it's like quilt taboo. I'm doing it. I really love it. My uh, first quilt is not, it should not see the light of day ever. I don't think it has, actually. I think it's been in a corner of a closet oh. for all the apartments I've ever lived in. Oh, you should bring it out. I mean, maybe it's a tradition now, though. You could use it as a bath mat. I was... <laughs> 
I could use it. I mean, it, it's small. I mean, it should be There's used. There's a lot of fleece involved. So what? <laughs> we, already, we already have a couple questions. Here, oh, if you okay. Guys are ready for them? Um, Stacy would like to know how often do you quilt with batiks, and Adam wants to know how long it took to quilt, uh, to make the quilt that you just showed. Which this quilt? Uh, how long did that quilt take? Oh, quilt? okay. Um, I'll start with that question since it's fresh. I have no idea. Uh, a couple weeks if I was going to quilt it straight through, but then I did a bunch of hand quilting on it and that probably oh. took, I, I don't know, four or five days. I think I do remember that. that four or five days for this triangle quilt? For the quilting. Mm -hmm. Because I was also new to hand quilting, so it was really quite a long no, process. No, no, I think that, that sounds short to me. Oh. Well, because we should tell them about the double wedding ring quilt. Yeah, that took a which year. Took One year. A whole year. Yeah. So don't feel bad if you can't piece right. together an entire quilt in, and hand quilt it in four to five days. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Oh, uh, the first question was. Do you ever work with batiks? I don't. I like really solid fabrics with um, no difference in tone in the fabric. So I don't. If they would make a solid batik that was solid, solid, I'd absolutely use it. Or a hand dyed fabric that wasn't marbles, I would use yeah. it. But I, I don't like the difference in right. shading. And solid color is your thing. It is my thing. And so I thought yeah. we could talk a little bit about um, some of your processes or great. things you great. think about when you're okay. putting together a quilt. That sounds great. So we have these right. guys. So first, I'm going to talk about value a little bit. And value is just the lightness or darkness of a fabric, and it's a really great tool that I focus on a lot. So right now, I'm just going to show you some pink and yellow of different values. So we're going to start off easy. So here's a light pink and a light value. It also has low contrast, meaning that there's not a lot of distinction. When you squint your eyes, you can't really differentiate whether one is light and one is dark. Mm -hmm. And here we have another really light yellow. This is a very light value mm -hmm. and not as much distinction. So we start ramping up the color. Look how much that pops, mm -hmm. right? Really Whereas pretty. these are really kind of calm and soothing. Mm -hmm. And here we just continue ramping up the color, playing with the value. Our pinks are darker. Our yellows are much darker. And in this one, we've gone really light on the yellow, really dark on the pink, and it's so super vibrant. But look what happens. And we've, I've just played with the value of pink and yellow. Look what happens when you get all of these dark, dark fabrics in there. It becomes, to me, a little oppressive when I look at it. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like it's muddier. just, woo, I don't know. It's really intense. And then so, but look what happens when you throw in some of these lighter colors. All of a sudden, the whole quilt kind of opens it's up. It's so much more interesting. Right? Now, the other thing that is really interesting is look what happens when you have these high contrast blocks. All together, again, your quilt gets super intense. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I go, I quilt with my emotions. And I get really uncomfortable when my quilt gets too intense, which I guess when other people look at my quilts, they might think they're really intense. But I definitely have areas in there of these really soothing, low contrast colors. And they kind of balance it out for me. They get less dramatic in some ways, but also, now that block stands out. Hold on, we're having technical difficulties. Can you just turn this back on? Yeah, yeah that turned off. I don't know. All right, now we're back. Be. Great. All right. All right. Hi, everyone. <sighs> we're back. Where were we? We were at the really exciting part. Everything's back on the screen. <laughs> we're at the really exciting part. I think that the colors were too intense for the camera. <laughs> it was like, whoa, ah, drama. Game out. So watch this. This is really interesting. So this stands out really quite mm -hmm. dramatically, right? But as soon as we put all of these ones in, it starts standing out a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Like, because this one is bright and this right. one is really high contrast. So it's a really fun thing to play with, to play with value, how something stands out. And what I like to have is areas of high contrast and low contrast in my quilt, and it really keeps your eye moving. Mm -hmm. It adds a lot of interest. I'm into it. Yeah. 
I mean, that's just pink and yellow. Well, and it's, it's pretty obvious once you lay it out and you take away yeah. the, the neutral ones and you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah. And then we have these examples. Yeah, this is another fun, fun little tool or trick that I like to play with, and it's just about the intensity of color. So here I have this pink and orange, and it's pretty, it's pretty intense, mm -hmm. you know. It's very dramatic. But look what happens. I've kept the orange exactly the same, and I've just darkened that pink. I've just doled it down a little bit, and I love playing with that, just like really slight, subtle variations in shade. And look what happens to the orange. It's electric mm -hmm. in that color combination. It's a totally different flavor. Yeah, that's a really fun, fun tool to play with. And then here we have this amazing optical illusion. Yeah, so the last two really dealt with value and in color intensity. And this is just playing with what one color looks like when you pair it with another color. And I still focus on this in my quilts. Like it, you just never stop learning with this one. So these are all the same turquoises. And look at that turquoise with the khaki. It's like nice and soothing. And then with the white, it really starts to pop. Yes, trial and error. <laughs> Good Seriously. answer. That is what it's all about. That is how I've learned about color. Brianne just asked uh, if there was a particular resource that Tara used to learn about color. Trial and error. Trial and error. Yeah, yeah, just, just doing it, just playing with it and noticing what I liked and didn't like. And I know in a lot of these classes we've been going through, yeah. You always encourage the students to play around and experiment yeah. and see what works for yeah. them. And it seems like yeah. for you, it's a very intuitive yeah, process. Yeah, it's so intuitive, and it's really hard to teach intuition. You have to right. discover that for yourself, right? Like, but generally, most of us know how to put colors on our bodies and our homes. Right. But then, some reason, when it comes to quilting, there's right. like a block. Well, I like that could also be a pun about quilt blocks. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, forgive <laughs> no, that's me. That's really good. <laughs> but these are a perfect example for right. pairing things and how. Yeah, so look at this, look at this aqua. And these with, are exactly the same. It's exactly the same color. And it's crazy because when I look at this, I mean, mm -hmm. this looks like a green aqua mm -hmm. to me, and that looks like more of a bluey aqua. Yep. This has more yellowy in it. It's crazy. And it's definitely the same, the same color. It's exactly the same. It doesn't even look the same when you put it next to each other because it's so interacting with mm -hmm. this white, whereas this one's interacting with this khaki. I mean, it's fascinating. Do you have a favorite one of these, or do you not want to? No. Offend them. Yeah. <laughs> They're, They're all equally They're all important. your children. Right. Now for the last one, mm -hmm. I, I definitely, when you said this in one of the classes, I was like, oh my god, I gotta go home and try this out myself. Um, it's okay. how you pick out the colors for your quilt. Yeah, so I have all of these pieces that came from a quilt that I finished, I don't know, a couple months ago. And I thought, I brought them in today because I thought it would be really great to show how I pick color, and it's super simple. So instead of going to my fabric stash and pulling out 60 fabrics, I don't do that. I start with maybe five and then go from there. So maybe I'll start with magenta. I almost always start with magenta because it's the color that I love the most and is in every single quilt that I've ever made. Maybe is that'll it? change. Yeah, maybe it'll with change. Your signature? Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, what, it's just. It's it, really nice. I have not found a color that this does not go with, so. All right. What I'll do I is I'll you. start, and I'll just pull a color that I think goes really pretty with magenta. I love that color combination. Mm -hmm. And I'll have those two down. And I used this process when I made the double wedding ring that's behind us, um, and how to pick colors for the arcs. So now that I have these two colors, I just ignore the magenta, and I take up that green. I would not put those two colors together, but I'm gonna keep this one aside. And I'm gonna choose a color that I like to go with the green. And you're just scanning. Yeah, I just kind of run it over my fabrics. Mm -hmm. And then I forget about those two colors, and I'm gonna choose a color that I like to go with the blue. I could choose this orange that's really hot and bright, but look what happens when I tone the orange to like a more of a Ooh. pinky color, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have quite as much contrast. And then, Again, I'm not gonna put those two colors together, but I'm gonna find a color that I really like with that coral. It's so fun and to watch you do this. And then what happens. These guys 
are right next to each other. I wouldn't put them necessarily right next to each mm -hmm. other on the quilt, but they have this blue in between, and all of a sudden, they're not really talking to each other as much as they're talking to this one. Mm -hmm. Now I have all of these colors laid out, and I might, I, I feel like it's a little bit um, redundant, so maybe I'll just substitute out. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Look what happens, it's crazy. Maybe that's too crazy. That's great. Maybe that's too crazy, so I'm just gonna tone it down by putting a dark color right next to it. And then it just kind of like tones it back down right. again. And so when you're making the double wedding ring quilt, do you do this for every single? Yeah. That's amazing. Every single arc. It's really fun. It's really addictive. How many colors did you put in like one quilt? Well, this quilt that I pulled these chips from has yeah. all of these colors. I don't know, it's 60. The double wedding 60. ring probably has a couple hundred. What? Because it's from my scrap bin. Oh, that's right. My all time scrap bin. Like all the scraps that I ever created all because I scraps. never throw away fabric. I now regret throwing away that seafoam right. green that I never right. thought I was going to use. Because right. it could have ended up in something like I this. I know. I know. Do we have any more questions? We do. Oh, okay. Um, well, Denise would like to know what style quilt could I make my parents for their 60th anniversary? Ooh, Denise, that's a hard question. Denise wants to know what kind of quilt she should make her parents for their 60th wedding anniversary. Congratulations to your parents. That's quite an achievement. I wonder, I mean, Denise, I wonder if if there's like a, a, a like a 50th anniversary quilt. So they're like, I wonder if there's certain quilts like that- Like a standard. Like a standard. Oh. That would be a really interesting thing to look up online, you know, to see if there's a standard anniversary quilt. I know a double wedding ring is super classic for people who are getting married, mm -hmm. right? And you're saying 60 years? Yeah. Maybe it's a double wedding ring. That would be my ring. first choice yeah. <laughs> is the double wedding ring. It's really special. 30 double wedding rings for 60 rings. Yes. How insane would that be? Liana um, is our moderator and also apparently a genius, and she says if you have 30 <laughs> double wedding rings, that'd be 60 rings. I love that idea. That was great. Yeah, that would be a great quilt to make. Uh, okay, let me see. I feel like there were more. Okay, just makes me, oh, Anita, she wanted to know, do you ever use the black and white foam feature for color? Plates? Yeah, I do all the time. I have a really small, oh, should I repeat the question? Sure. I keep seeing you going over there. Anita, was it Anita? Anita. Anita yeah. asked if I ever use the black and white feature on my phone for what was it, just for, for quilt design? For finding value. Um, yeah, and I use my phone all the time because I have a really small studio. Like, it's short, I can't get away from the design wall. Mm -hmm. So I'll look at the quilt through my camera oh. and miniaturize the quilt. Oh, yeah. Because you can't back up enough. Yeah, I can't back up enough. Oh, I can't, like, brilliant. get away for, far enough away, so I'll just stand there. And then I'll also take pictures mm -hmm. and then walk away from the quilt and go sit and look at the picture. Really? It's really interesting. Like what you could, like you'll look at a quilt on the design wall and you won't see the most glaring thing that really annoys you oh. until you look at the picture and you're like, "Oh, there it is right there." So, I do. That's I don't necessarily use the black and white feature as much, but I have in the past and it's really useful for seeing value. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your questions and Tara, thank you so much for Thanks. joining us. You've been an absolute rock star. Oh, I'm thank so you. excited for your classes to come out. Yeah, me too. And thank you all of us for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye everyone.